So we have calculated enthalpy change, delta H, using calorimetry data. Now in this video, we're going to look at a theoretical calculation of delta H using bond energies. We look up these bond energies in a table, and in your textbook, you'll find that table on page 307. So a bond association energy is defined as the amount of energy required to break a bond. Now, through the law of conservation of energy, that's also the same amount of energy that's released when that bond is formed. So for example, as you'll see in page three, on page 307, table 1, a hydrogen-hydrogen single bond has a bond association energy of 432 kilojoules per mole. That unit is kilojoules per mole. So what does that mean? It means that 432 kilojoules of energy is required to break one mole, there's your per mole, of hydrogen-hydrogen single bonds. That's also the same amount of energy that's released when one mole of hydrogen-hydrogen single bonds form. So let's now use bond energies to calculate delta H. There's some notation in this formula which may be unfamiliar. This term here, this symbol here, is a summation notation. And so that means that we are going to take n, the number of moles, and multiply by the bond association energy, there's capital D, which we're going to look up in a table. And we're going to do that for all of the bonds that are being broken. So the summation just means to repeat that multiplication of moles times dissociation energy multiple times for however many bonds there are that are being broken. Then we're going to subtract the same, the same calculation, but for all the bonds that are being formed. So let's look at a specific example. Well, actually, regarding the units, I'll just make a note here. N is measured in moles, and bond association energy is measured in kilojoules per mole. And so when we go about multiplying those, moles will cancel. That'll leave us with kilojoules. And we'll do that multiple times for however many bonds are broken. Over, we're going to be subtracting, and it'll be the same idea. We'll have moles times the kilojoules per mole, and so the moles will cancel, and that will leave us with kilojoules. So when we do kilojoules, subtract kilojoules, we're going to end up with units of kilojoules. And that's what delta H should be measured in, enthalpy change. Okay, so let's begin by looking at this example. Calculate the enthalpy change for the combustion of methane. So. First step, write a balanced equation for the combustion of methane. So pause the video, write a balanced equation for the combustion of methane. Then check the video again. Okay, so there's our balanced equation for the combustion of methane. You'll notice I put delta H equals question mark. That's what we've been asked to find, right? We're being asked to calculate the enthalpy change and we write this balanced equation. So we're going to calculate the enthalpy change for this balanced equation as written. Next, use your knowledge of structure to draw the reactants and products. So draw a molecule of methane. Draw the oxygen gas molecule. Draw the CO2. Draw the water. Then check in with the video. Okay, so I drew the methane molecule, <clears throat> two oxygen molecules, why did I draw one? Why did I draw two CO2s? There's only one there, and two water molecules. <clears throat> okay, you'll notice I drew a squiggly line here underneath the arrow just to separate the reactants and the products. So I can see that on the left side here, this is where bonds need to be broken, and on the right side, this is where bonds are going to be formed. And so that ties into the formula where we're going to take the sum of moles times the bond association energy for the bonds that are being broken, and we're going to subtract the sum for all of the bonds moles times the bond association energy for those that are being formed. Why the subtraction? Because when bonds are formed, energy is released. And so essentially that release is a negative, right? So instead of adding a negative, we're just going to subtract. That's where the negative is coming in. That allows us to just read the values of D right off of the table and use those positive numbers. 
<clears throat> okay, so I start with the methane. How many moles of carbon hydrogen single bonds are there? Well, there are four, right? So four times the bond association energy of the carbon hydrogen single bond. And I'm going to add, again, that's the idea of this summation notation here, is I'm going to repeat this calculation. So I'm going to sum. So here's moles times the bond association energy of CH. And I'm going to do the same now for the other bonds that need to be broken. So there are two oxygen-oxygen double bonds. So it'll be two times the bond association energy of O double bonded to O. And we're going to subtract. I'll put brackets here in case that negative needs to be distributed. So N is the number of carbon oxygen double bonds I see, and I see that there are two here. So I'm going to use two times the bond dissociation energy of C double bond O as it's found in CO2. So make sure you look at the bottom of table one there. And we're going to add again because of the summation notation. And now I notice that there are four oxygen hydrogen single bonds in the water molecules. So now we're able to plug in the numbers that we see from table one. So look up the bond dissociation energy for the carbon hydrogen single bond. You'll see it's 413. So go ahead and complete the rest of this equation and calculate delta H. Check back with the video. Okay, so I have substituted the values that were found and I did take the time to write out the total sum of the kilojoules of energy associated with the bonds being broken on the reactant side. And I've written here the sum of the 2 times 799 plus the 4 times the 467, just so that you can see this is the energy being released when the new bonds were formed. So when you compare that to the energy required to break the bonds, you can see that the energy that's being released is greater. And so we will end up with a negative delta H. And that's very consistent then, right? When you have a negative delta H, this means that the energy is transferring from the system to the surroundings. Now, is that an exothermic or endothermic reaction? When energy transfers to the system from the surroundings. Hopefully you're thinking exothermic. And that should be no surprise that a negative delta H or that delta H is negative for an exothermic reaction. So going way back to our first video when we were talking about endo and exothermic, here you can see a theoretical calculation of the amount of energy required to break the bonds on the reactant side coming in at 2642 and the amount of energy released when the new bonds are formed. The, the difference there, negative 824 kilojoules. So 824 kilojoules of energy is being released by the system in this combustion reaction. And so our final answer up here, right, is that delta H equals negative 824 kilojoules. Okay, that's our answer. That's our enthalpy change when one mole of methane is combusted to with two moles of oxygen gas to produce one mole of CO2 and two moles of water. All of the questions are done the same way. Write your balanced equation, draw the structures, count the number of moles, and go ahead and, and look up your bond association energies and plug them into the formula. Hopefully this isn't something you're just memorizing, but you can connect it back to the theory of endo and exothermic reactions so that you can understand why the numbers make sense.